What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday night. It is Orlando Real Live, where we talk about all things real estate, theme parks, and living here in Greater Orlando. I'm visited and joined by my favorite co-host here tonight, Kristen Pavlik. How wait, are wait, you? Is that recorded? Did yeah, hundred percent. What? <laughs> Somebody save that. Send it to me. I said, I said, favorite favorite co-host for tonight. Yeah. Okay. I I missed the last part, but it, that's all that <laughs> you, matters. You, you internalized the one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what's going on, Kristen? What's new with you? Everything. Run Disney's happening this weekend. Oh, so many uh, local events are happening. Interest rates had something happen today. Yes. So there's quite a bit going on. How We're about you? Very, uh, you know, I'm doing very well. We've got so many weird things happening with our real estate industry, the ups and downs, like you mentioned, the interest rates. We're talking about just crazy things with our industry in general that are happening, which we may or may not get into tonight, depending on the questions that they have. Uh, but first thing I need to know, because last week we had a little bit of a camera issue. Can you guys see? see us, let us know. Can you hear us? Let us know. That would be really helpful. Uh, but and then from there, you're already checking in the way that uh, you guys know what to do. The OG folks checking in, you know what to do. We like to know where you're watching from. And uh, what are you excited about right now? What's going on? Are you excited for the holiday season mm -hmm. coming up? Uh, and where are you watching from? Maybe that actually helps us the most. Yeah. Where are you from? Where yes. are you? Where are you watching from? We've got uh, somebody who's already checking in from Capstone from Huntsville, Alabama. We got Diz Deb checking in from right down the street here in Winter Garden. But Annette, probably the farthest from Winter Garden, Orlando, checking in from Denmark. Denmark, so cool. We love that. Very, very cool. Uh, Juliet's checking in. Mike and Juliet actually from New York. Weather's going to be perfect for the marathon on Sunday. Have fun. So we're both running on Sunday. Yes. I'm running the New York Marathon for the first time. And I'm running one and dine half marathon. Yes. So yours is much more impressive and exciting. But this you're going to have better weather. I probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But this is your first full marathon? It is my first full marathon. And you've done a marathon Can before. I'm so excited. I already signed up for the Walt Disney World full in January. January. Mm -hmm. uh, Just the full? You're not going to do the dopey with me? No, you're a little crazy. <laughs> um, good for you. Um, Johnny says, I can see you and hear you. So thank you so much. Perfect. I appreciate you letting us know. All good. Everybody's checking in. Vic and everybody's checking in. Who else we got here? We got... Um, uh, Nikki, Nick, Nikhil checking in from Panama City. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Uh, we've got people checking in from Windermere. We got people from Lake Nona. We've got L Town, which is Livonia, Michigan, for those of you that don't know. Oh, you got somebody from New York City. <laughs> New York City. Good luck this weekend. A lot of people from New York City. That's so, so cool. So let's check in. We keep checking in down below. Also, uh, feel free to drop your questions whenever you like, whether that's right now or as we go about. We like to answer those questions. We have a kind of a format that we like to go through news that we think is important, mm -hmm. but this show is about you guys. We want to know what you're thinking, what's important to you. If you're thinking about moving here, you're thinking about moving around Central Florida, what other questions do you have? Uh, but one of the things, Kristen, I was curious about, something that came up from another story on a big development that's coming, which we'll get to, but was like, what's important when people are buying a home specifically for the amenities within mm. the neighborhood. Okay. So what type of amenities are they looking for? Is that more? Yeah, along exactly. The lines? Yeah. Okay. So some people will say like, I don't want a homeowner's association. I don't want the fees. I don't want the bureaucracy and which other people. I totally get, which I totally get. You yeah. don't have a homeowner's association. I do not have a homeowner, but I still have this County and they can be just as obnoxious. They can be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or you can put like a big monster on the outside of your house. You could. I mean, I don't know if anybody does that, <laughs> but you could. <laughs> Uh, Victor's checking in from Guatemala and Inner's checking in from Germany. So we do have people so from diverse. all over the, the world. See, that's why we have people check in. It's so cool to think uh, that people are watching us from all over the world. That's it's so, crazy. so very fun. Uh, all right. So, so people that reach out, though, we have a list here of like nine homeowners association amenities that you, quote, must have in your HOA. Let's go through this and all see right. what the people think and also what you think. Alpha's checking in from Bermuda. So we also have, this is the wildest thing ever. That is wild. We have I a love cool this. job. We have such a cool job. I absolutely People love don't this. realize how cool uh, this job is. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's right. a lot of work, but it it's is. so cool. It's so, so cool. <laughs> All right. So we've got nine HOA amenities that you must have in your HOA community. We want to know what you guys think down below. Uh, but number one is a fitness center. So it's, it, they, they get very like deep here. Due to the prevalence of obesity and other diseases today, Americans are becoming more health conscious. Yeah, I mean, sure. And there's also the people that just want like, you know, to work out on the right, first of the year. There's also like tons of gyms 
pretty much everywhere in Central Florida. So if you have one in your HOA, HOA community, I think they're really only beneficial if they have um, like fitness instructors or yoga teachers, or they actually have good equipment. Otherwise, yeah. you how many times have you walked into one of those gyms and it's completely empty? Completely empty with like old outdated equipment and nobody really wants to use it. I went, we did this video, it's coming out on Tuesday and it was like, um, you know, what does different price points get you in Central Florida? And we went to the first one and it was like, gym equipment that was easily 20 years old, 20, 30 years old. And you're just, just like, not going to fly, not going to fly. I mean, if you're going to pay, a, if you're going to pay homeowners association, right. you want to make sure that you actually have nice equipment, mm -hmm. right? That you, works, isn't broken. There's not signs on it that say, don't use it. No, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So what do you think though? Is, is it, is it important for these fitness centers to have a yoga teacher or have somebody that's like teaching along the way? I would say that that gives it a lot more value as mm -hmm. opposed to just a line of treadmills, maybe some free weights. But I mean, everybody's different. I, I will say that the most uh, active communities that I see that have those fitness instructors, like a Zumba teacher or a yoga teacher, you do see a lot of people using those facilities. Agreed. I, I also see a lot of this in active adult communities Yes, where they have the, the whole like lifestyle curator where they're doing like everything to make sure that there's like bridge club and yeah. like bingo night and all this other yoga stuff. Yoga on the lawn. Yoga on the lawn, Zumba, aerobic <laughs> classes. Like you got cool stuff and, and getting people involved. I think that anytime you can, you can pair fitness with also the community aspect. That's a cool thing. So right. what about uh, number two they had on the list here, outdoor recreation. It says many residences enjoy spending time outdoors, whether that's simply walking to de-stress de or relax. Um, I think about celebration and we're actually mm -hmm. going to get into some of our favorite homeowners associations with a lot of these amenities next. But I think about celebration and yes. there's like 20 miles of trails. So many trails. I, I, but I mean, it's so beautiful. It's part of the community. It's almost like a nature-based community. I, I know Sunbridge is yeah. focusing on doing something like that too. So that'll be really cool. But okay, outdoor recreation, we're talking about Florida. What yes. are we actually talking about? We're talking about a pool. Yeah, you have pool. to have a pool. You have to have a pool. If you're going to have a homeowners association, you're going to pay for it. You better have a pool. Uh, you can also obviously have tennis courts. You can have basketball mm -hmm. courts. Pickleball is really trendy right now. Pickleball is very trendy. There's <laughs> a lot of people turning tennis courts like they had five or ten tennis courts. And they're like, you know what? Let's turn half of those into pickleball. Genius. I think yeah. so. Have you ever played pickleball? I Okay. So I have not Me either, but I know that it's cool and fun to do. Let's go play cool? pickleball. We'll, we'll actually, we'll get a YouTube video just for you just guys. Playing pickleball. <laughs> I think that's just actually just 40 minutes. This is actually a good of thing. Me and Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, well, they don't want to watch that. Uh, they don't want to watch that. All right. So HOA child friendly amenities. This now, is the most important thing I think, because if you're talking about community, you're yeah. talking about families getting together, you've got kids in the house. Where can we go? That's walkable that I don't have to drive and load yep. all the kids up where we can interact with other kids and have some fun. That's right. Parks, Parks. playgrounds, Huge. essential. Yeah. I mean, our neighborhood that we live in now doesn't have the greatest park system. And so we actually go, we, we live in winter garden, but we go over to celebration many times Oh, and we will, there's like, there's taught lots. There's great lots for our mm -hmm. kids that are, you know, five, 12, 15 I feel run that. around. Um, they can enjoy it. And so, yeah, I think this is great. Child friendly amenities. I think is a good one. And it's like something that kids can grow into. It's not just a little slide that once they're over three years old, they're never going to use. They're again. bored of. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah for sure. You don't want to pay to maintain something like that, that none of these places are going to reuse. And actually you can kind of, to tell people always ask us, Kristen, uh, how old are, are there any kids in the neighborhood? Many times you can tell if there are kids in the neighborhood because of how well they maintain their, their kids mm, amenities. Yeah. So the swing set's not broken and falling apart. Yeah. yeah because absolutely. if you're, if you're a mom or a dad with kids and you're like, you go by there and like, you're dude, you can't use this. You're going to be the one complaining to the management company. But if everybody's kids are in college or like, you know, everybody's moved on and you see everything's broken, there's that's, not as much demand for it. That makes sense. So yeah. drive around, take a look at the tot lots, take a look at the playground. How nice are they? I totally agree. There absolutely. you go. Next one, number four, HOA pet friendly amenities. And so you have a couple of pets. I do. I have a dog and three cats. I will say there's not really pet friendly amenities for cats, <laughs> but having a dog park is really, really nice to yeah. have. I mean, you could get the dog out of the house and that way you don't have to have all your neighbors with those signs that say, don't poop in my yard <laughs> or the poop fairy <laughs> right, doesn't yeah. live here or something. Poop, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do you have a, a, a big dog or a little dog? She is 65 pounds. That's a big dog. Yeah. Okay. And so if you go to a dog park and you, would it be helpful if you saw like the little dog park next to the big dog park? 100%. Yeah. And what was that just so that you, like your big dog doesn't go run over a 10 put, pound have, pound? So not to knock on Baldwin Park's dog park. Yeah. Have you been there? 
I just I just walked by. It we is like the Wild West of dog parks. <laughs> I mean, it is like a free. We went there. We've been there so many times. And honestly, we, we've kind of like taken a step back. Fortunately, we have a larger dog, so it's a little safer. But sure. you get people with tiny puppies, little, you know, dachshunds and schnauzers and these little pugs. And then these 70, 80 pounds dog, dogs just bulldozing these poor little dogs and running them over. I'm just like, this This is not safe, Baldwin Park. No, <laughs> and no, we they, have that's a, a small section. But in downtown areas, you'll see a lot of those dog parks with that split. Totally. So the little dog park and the large. And I think that's just nice. I agree. And so I know Celebration does have like the little bit, the little dog park, the big dog park, so parks downtown, they've got them split up. Uh, but like, you know, waste stations are important. Yes. Um, you know, obviously some fenced in areas to where if you mm -hmm. let a dog off a leash, they can run and do their thing. This thing says dog Doggy daycare and grooming salon. How great would that be? Well, where is that? That's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> How much are those yeah. HOA fees? <laughs> Forget the kids these days. We Let's just, go to the dog parks. That's it. We're, we're appealing to a whole new generation of All people. Right. So these active adult communities are going to have to shift a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got to give some love to JJ Hernandez because he, he's talking about Hunters Creek has seven private parks, Shingle Creek Trail and Soccer Club and baseball team for Hunters Creek kids. And then he went on to say Ken hates uh, Hunters Creek. I actually no. don't. This is not true at all. <laughs> I actually talked about this in my, one of my most recently video, my most recent videos. Uh, I think Hunters Creek is a great one. We don't have a standalone video for Hunters Creek because it's just not big enough. But I think that uh, Hunters Dylan Creek is- Dylan would love that. Dylan would love, he should be on the video. He should the case. be the video. He is like the uh, the little pseudo mayor of Hunters Creek. <laughs> Shout out to Dylan if you're watching. Um, <laughs> uh, but dude, yeah, we definitely, the, the location of it, it's just, it's in between kind of Celebration and Lake Nona, right mm -hmm. along the 417. You've got, I think it was rated the best neighborhood in all Super of the cool country in like 1991 or something like I that. I love that. <laughs> but it's been a minute. Uh, great spot. Great spot. Uh, Freedom High School. Let's go. All right. So number five, Village Center. Now, this is something that we see a lot of in terms of homeowners associations here in Central Florida. Mm -hmm. So larger communities, Baldwin Park, like you yes. mentioned, Celebration has a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, what other places have a good Village Center? This is reunion. Reunion. Fallen. Yep. Reunion yep. falls in that category. Definitely great over there. Um, trying to think of what else. I mean, what we're talking about, like what shops and, you know, like stores. Yeah, yeah, it's places that people can lease amenities and coffee shops, mm -hmm. uh, laundry mats, like little things, like little mom and pop shops downtown, like a more. Yeah, uh, Bella urban. Lago has yeah, a yeah, yeah. flip flops barn grill inside, you know, so there's some pretty cool communities that have stuff like that. Yeah. It becomes like a neighborhood staple, you know, everybody that's their restaurant. That's, that's their shop. Exactly, like, yeah. I love that. The locals support the, the vibe for sure. Uh, what about uh, like public areas like number six, it says, uh, picnic tables, barbecue areas, like, you know, covered pergolas, those sort of things. How, how important do you feel like those are to buyers that we're working with? I don't know. I don't have a lot of buyers who specifically ask for these amenities, mm -hmm. but I definitely think if you're going into a community and you're seeing, you know, the actual neighborhood being active in these spaces, having picnics, you see kids playing in the, in the green spaces. I, that just appeals to, to most people, I would say, right. Yeah, I totally I mean, agree. Helps sell the vibe of the community. You really can feel like you're becoming close to your neighbor, as opposed to a lot of these neighborhoods that don't have amenities. I mean, how well do you get to know the people that you live around? Yeah, I totally agree. I think the more community that you can cultivate through this stuff, uh, the better. Uh, so number seven, this is an interesting one. They said the co-working spaces and great connectivity. Now, I don't know that many of these places have have great co-working spaces mm. that I can think of here locally. Uh, no. Maybe some of the downtown areas um, that we have down here. Yeah, there's some co-ops buildings, but they're not sure. in neighborhoods. They're more so in downtown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a, like a, I'm thinking a, like a business center or something like that. I don't, there's not a ton of those around. No, there. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Maybe downtown Orlando, you've got some of the like the larger condo buildings or apartment buildings oh, yeah, that have yeah, business centers, that sort of thing. That's true. Um, actually, we talked about this not too long ago, the society, which people were, uh, some people were hating on the society. We did this video about this. Yeah, I, I, I remember. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, I had messaged Ken, I was like, there's a lot of hate A lot of haters side. on this like, video. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It's such a big deal. Uh, but, but yeah, connectivity, having like more co-working space, a little bit more connectivity within the building, I think is an important thing. Uh, number eight to talked about was environment friendly amenities. So uh, being aware of the environment. So having recycling bins, compost bins, rainfall collectors, and easy additions. I don't see this an absolute ton that people are willing to pay extra for. But what we are seeing is like the grow over in East Orlando by Pulte. This is going to be where people can come together and farm together, which that's I think neat. is kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but it's not a very specific type of people that would be interested in that. This is I, true. I think it's great. Yeah. And great. I mean, most of the time when we think of environmentally friendly, we think solar panels just because they're so common. And for the most part, if you're 
getting those as part of the community feature, it's because they were forcing you to. Because <laughs> they, they say all the homes come with solar panels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's like um, yeah, over in Moss Park, there's a little in our neighborhood. I think it's innovation. And every every single house had to have solar panels mm -hmm. and you paid for it. And then so people ask rather often is, what's a solar panel actually worth? And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if you're in a neighborhood where they're all solar paneled, then right. you have to be like everybody else. But if like you're it. the only one in the neighborhood, an appraiser is not actually going to value those in addition to the property. So this is true. They're free to the next buyer. They're free. <laughs> yeah. Cause you can't, a lot, of, a lot of times, like, you know, the buyer has to get approved for both their mortgage and the lease payment, which can be tough in this market with the interest rates, the way that they're at That's and affordability right. being tough. So a lot of times you have to pay off the solar panels in order to sell the home. Yeah. So it's free solar panels. Free solar panels. All right, number nine, and we're going to move on for the rest of our story. Concierge services. This is where I think condos in downtown. Condos in downtown. I also think Golden Oak celebration. Golden Oak. Right? Yes. So you've got, uh, if you're a part of Golden Oak, you have to belong to the summer house. This is not something that you can opt out of, mm. uh, but they have multiple concierge, which you can get like dining and you can mm -hmm. get it's like everything right, right there for you. Um, they can also it's help with different Disney. events. It's very Disney. It's yeah. Very Disney. It feels like you're living in a hotel, right? Right inside your neighborhood. And so you pay for that. You pay for the, the, uh, the privilege of it. Uh, but it's a big one. Now here's another one. This is actually the story that made me start thinking about the amenities that people really want or don't want was this new thing. Uh, the growth spotter did an article. So Tampa developer files construction plans for a lagoon anchored subdivision in Osceola. And so I'm like a lagoon. This is interesting because mm. we've only have one of these. It's not open yet, but it's over in Evermore Resort. Right. Um, that's going to be coming up soon. And so uh, this is I started digging in this a little bit more. And so Whaley Platt is a mixed use development on Kissimmee Park Road, and it's going to be east of Lake Toho. And so we were like, well, where is this place? Because it's this is wild, Kristen. This property is 28 hundred houses. That's a lot of houses. Can we put that into perspective? Yes. Like, okay, celebration. Yes. How many houses? Like 34, 3,500. So it's like another like celebration 2.0 in terms of how big this actually is. It's massive. Is. It's absolutely massive. And it's in Kissimmee. So you said next to Lake Toho. So over yep. by that Bella Lago um bella lago community right yes. yeah yeah I mean, so have you has okay you i need to know has anybody been over to lake toho you've been i've been yeah no i mean i was so it's funny i as we were doing show prep for this i'm like over by this Kissimmee park road where this is actually going to be off of my first sale ever in orlando i had cold called somebody that couldn't sell their house and it was this house right next door oh my so gosh it needs a plaque it's <laughs> ken Pozak <laughs> sold this first sale first house uh, this is like, uh, so Willie wild Willie's airboat tours was real, literally next door. And did that help sell the home? Ken, no, was that a selling No, factor? not at all. Not at all. It was kind of a detriment, but you could look <laughs> out the back, you could look out the back and you could see Lake Toho. And it was like, you know, this beautiful view. And I was like, well, what's that over there? And they're like, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> and it was like <laughs> the boats flying by. Airboats flying oh by. my God. It's so bad. But, uh, but, but you yeah, sold it. I, we, yeah, we definitely sold see, it. Everything Ken touches turns to sold. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so good. Anyways, back to the neighborhood. So this is going to have a, uh, a, a lagoon. And so I think this is an interesting thing when you start looking at some of the photos here, for those of you watching back over on YouTube, you those can see so cool. So, so cool. And I think going back to amenities and what people are looking for, I think they're looking ultimately, if you had to broad strokes, they're looking for affordability. Mm -hmm. They're looking for good schools mm -hmm. and they're looking for a community they can be proud of. Yes. And then they can connect with other people. Yeah, about that's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then obviously from there, it might be drive time and some other things are going to be really important. But uh, they're going to be breaking this neighborhood up into three different phases and launching this out. Uh, I have not been able to find out which builders are going to be associated with it, but they are putting in a K-8 school. Uh, they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff inside this. And so the location of it, again, uh, right off of Kissimmee Park Road, you're not too far from uh, Florida's Turnpike. Uh, to get there and you already have like mi homes is over there mm -hmm. jones homes is over there so we're talking about what like maybe 30 minutes to the theme park area yeah like actually let's throw it in right here let's see um so getting from this area to say disney world it's 29 minutes boom yeah right, up right on the money love it yeah you crushed it that was so good <laughs> yeah maybe 30 minutes 
it's I felt that. I was like, I just drove to Lake Tahoe That's the right. other day. I know how far that is. You knew it. <laughs> uh, all right. So what are some other like rock star HOAs or um, like neighborhoods with amenities? And you and I kind of did this pre-show. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the ones you've already mentioned was Reunion. Reunion. Oh, gosh, I love Reunion. Short-term community as well as long-term residents. And they have so much going on there. All the golf courses, yep. which are private. Uh, the water park. I mean, they've got a water park. That's crazy Inside cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm restaurants, uh, putting greens. I mean, it's just, it's everything you could have at your fingertips. It's yep. really meant to feel like you're in a theme park setting. It is. Yeah. I mean, they've got it just set up for perfect for rentals, perfect for uh, people that live there even yeah. year round. So I think this is really, really cool. Uh, the next one we talked about was celebration. We love celebration. Really hard to beat celebration we in regards to just, in regards to just overall amenities. They've it, got yeah, no, I was just about to say, I hang out at that Starbucks in celebration oh. every holiday season That's when it's perfect. Christmas time and I hold my little warm beverage and I'm just like, it's so magical Why do here. I feel like I'm in a hol <laughs> Hallmark movie It is a Hallmark here. movie. Why don't we have a Hallmark movie in celebration? That's a great Somebody one. call somebody. We should create one, actually. <laughs> um, that's so good. Um, all right, so we have uh, Celebration's got 23 miles of trails. You've got, I think, six or seven pools. You've got multiple workout facilities. Uh, facilities yes. you have the downtown area a lot There's of businesses as well right at your fingertips right. so this uh ch 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 it checks off so many of that mm -hmm. list that we just kind of went through uh but what do you think about champions gate this is an interesting one that people ask about about yeah you know very similar in terms of a, a resort style community with all of the pools and the outdoor spaces i mean they have a volley they have volley they have sand volleyball courts don't they, they do over yeah there? that's pretty cool yeah, you've got golf you've got and again short-term rentals and it does seem as though some of the more short-term rental communities offer the most amount for amenities. Yeah, well, because they're trying to lure or entice would probably be the better word than lure, <laughs> entice people to come stay in these communities. And, and the homeowners are willing to pay these fees because yeah. they know that it's going to create bookings for them inside the properties and ultimately create income. So you have to amenitize these immunities, especially if you're appealing to people who are coming to Florida, yes, coming yeah. to stay in, in the big place where everybody vacations. So you need all of that. Yeah, sun doesn't do it all. Sun is great. That's what brings people here. Yeah. <laughs> but having a pool, having some amenities like to keep them in the neighborhood is going to be really important. And that's one of the things we tell our buyers all the time. Like we're going to actually talk about because somebody pre-show was asking in our question box, um, what about Winter Haven? What about some of these farther out areas? And I'm a fan um, in regards to just affordability, but there's just not a lot there. Unfortunately, central and central areas, yeah, it's tough. I mean, when when's the last time you saw something under three hundred thousand that was renovated and you know good value, right? Yeah. It's it's tough. It is. It is. All right, we got two more. We're going to check out. So, uh, Isleworth. So fancy, fancy, fancy for sure. Now, here's the thing: the reason why people love Isleworth is really just because for the golf course. For the safety, I it's mean, it's exclusive. It, it's very hard. Do you know how hard it is to get into Isleworth? It's, Even to, being a realtor that's been in there many times, they're like, oh "No, ma'am, we don't believe you." <laughs> it is, it is ridiculously hard to get into Isleworth. I mean, like, yeah, unless you need to know somebody, yeah. be on the list, <laughs> give up your blood type, and you're it, only on the list for a short period of time. Yeah, because they they cut you off. <laughs> they do, and then they've got roaming security, and like, so for the most part, you're paying for the. You know, you're, you're actually not even paying for the golf course with the homeowners association because mm -hmm. it's in the neighborhood, but mm -hmm. it's got its own separate uh, golf course uh, fee and a social membership and all that kind of stuff. But it all is within the neighborhood. You're paying for lake access. Mm -hmm. You're paying for safety. And that's kind of the, the majority of it. Yeah, it's almost like a brand name, you know, like you're yeah. paying for the brand name. Iowa. That's very true. Yeah. Iowa. Iowa. And then same thing with uh, Lake Nona Golf and Country Club. It's really, I mean, they're built they're from the same developer. Yes. And so very similar housing, very similar golf community, mm -hmm. safety, lake access. Yep. That's what you're buying. But then there's also the uh, social membership as mm -hmm. well and golf membership. And then well. Keen's point is, you know, golf course and all of that. Same mm -hmm. thing. Disney fireworks. This is true. Well, they're, mm -hmm. I mean, these are great. But what about when we're talking about amenities or things that are valuable in a community? What about like local events? Because there's mm. there's a lot of communities that maybe aren't an HOA community, but they have food truck events and they have, um, you know, fright nights during the holidays and they mm. have so many local things happening. Don't you think that there's a lot of people who are looking for something like that that's as a, well? That's a really good point. I think as people move here and it's, it's so hard sometimes for people to get connected mm -hmm. to community. And that's something that we as our team try to do. We try to cultivate that with some of our events. Uh, but if you're looking to move to a specific area, like that's why it's one of the reasons why I love Keen's Point, because they have like food truck rallies yes. and the Halloween horror, like the 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 Halloween actual nights meet and, and greets with the with the community members. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So let's right. talk about some neighborhoods that 
are not necessarily HOA neighborhoods, but have these events. Yeah, for sure. So you had this one that just popped up. This was a uh, taste of Thornton Park. That's happening right now. So don't don't oh. leave the show. Yeah, to yeah. Go, but <laughs> that's literally tonight. <laughs> or the show. It's until I think around 9.30 um, and they have it every year and it's it's just a, the t annual taste of Thornton Park. So they there's a fee, you go around, you get wine, beer, little tastings from, from local places. It's so great and it always like the street is fully packed every single time and it's so cool to see. Honestly, every time I miss it and I drive by, I, I get FOMO, oh, major yeah. FOMO because I'm like, what are all these people doing out here? <laughs> just socializing, hanging out. I mean, it's really one of the great gems. Gems. I love Thornton Park. No, me too. It's, it's, it's really so yeah, special. Hidden gem for sure. You're looking at it's like the, the classics, Earthy Picks, Vegan Delights. You've got Eola Wine Company, The Falcon, Graffiti Junction, Island Time. There's like dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of people that are like vendors that are out here at Taste of Thornton Park. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, what, what, now? El what else do you got going on? Well, there's also, I mean, Orlando in general has so many opportunities to get out into the community and do some really unique things. Mm -hmm. And so I sent this to you, Ken, because I was like, I saw R2D2 and I was like, oh, what? Share, share with Ken. It's the Maker Fair happening this weekend. No, I'm going to miss it. DIY. So it's like, it's kind of, they call it like the greatest show and tell on earth is what they say. And I mean, it's just creators who come together to share with each other the things that they've made. And honestly, I was like, how do I get my monster house face here? Because I feel like this would be a great thing to share. Are you about to scroll and share my monster I am going to show your monster house. So <laughs> for those of you, we talk about homeowners association, keeping people from making monster houses. Yeah. And for those of you watching on the YouTube channel right now and live, you can actually check Check out Kristen's house. How long did this take you and John to create? We have been working on this monster house for the entire time we've lived here. And even in a rental in Winter Park before we lived in this house was the first rendition of the monster face. And it is literally just insulation foam boards that we have put onto plywood and shaved down and sanded and hand painted and then hung on our house. So this year, what we did add was the three dimensional teeth. So on our front porch, for those listening, is actual giant like five and a half foot fangs so cool. um, like a big mouth and then a humongous like five foot 3d eyeball above that and then on the second story some more eyeballs and i'll tell you the first year in our neighborhood because we're not in an hoa community yeah. this is soto we're just like parked on the street next to kelly's ice cream <laughs> We had two trick or treaters. This year we had three hundred. Are you serious? Trick or treaters. Holy moly! Three hundred. We were featured as one of the top thirteen spooky houses in Orlando. So they love this. I mean, they that's cool. It. So, but this is by the Orlando Sentinel. They came out with the top thirteen, and I thought this was so cool to add in here because this does create community. I mean, you've got people voting. You've got people that like really get into the holidays, and so obviously. Well, what's so Halloween special about it, Ken, is I've learned more of my neighbors' names every year on Halloween than any other part of the year because they drive to my house, they walk to my house, they come, they're like, thank you so much for bringing this to the community. Sure. And it feels so amazing. And then I get to know them and we talk and it's, that's what community is, right? It's these special things that brings us together and opens up conversations. Yeah, no, I, it's so, so cool. Um, yeah, so Johnny says, well, you guys aren't messing around when it comes to Halloween. We Definitely don't mess don't around. This is mm -hmm. very true. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So car show at the convention center star says uh, starting November 2nd. That suits the Yeah, 5th. for all those car, you know, entrepreneurs, or, or what do we call them? Car aficionados. <laughs> John would love that. <laughs> uh, Daniel says, so going back to the celebration, you're getting a warm coffee. He says, Floridian some cake iced coffee coffee year round. Okay. Listen, all right. <laughs> listen, <laughs> I do. But every once in a while, you have to just be in the moment, yep. sit in celebration, you do. just take it all in <laughs> and sip a warm coffee until it's halfway done and then throw it away. This is absolutely true. Uh, Piglet says, uh, Claremont historic district has first Friday food trucks and yes. monthly wine stroll. Exactly. Yeah. That's the stuff we're talking about. That's the stuff that builds mm -hmm. community. And the beautiful thing about where Kristen lives or in downtown Claremont or, or some of these other places, Mount having, Dora's yeah. doing one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't, you're not paying your homeowners association fee. You're paying into the area. And this is part of the things that you should be thinking about when you're moving to an area and getting involved. But the cool thing also to me is that we have such a big wide variety. So depending on where you in, live in Central Florida, you can still take advantage of this. Yeah, pretty much anywhere. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. So uh, 
Is it Ty Gray's real estate says, this is so good. I just moved here from Philly and I'm love learning about Orlando. Thank you. Of course. Yay, Absolutely. we love that. Uh, JJ Hernandez says, I gave out 400 pieces of candy at the Vistas of Hunter's Creek. Hunter's Creek. This You're a big fan. I <laughs> love just, it. You should change your last name to JJ Hunter's, <laughs> Hunter's Creek. Creek. <laughs> uh, but it was so much fun, he said. That's so, so cool. All right. Well, let's talk about, uh, this is an article we started thinking about. Like, um, you know, we, again, we don't talk about families in regards to best place to raise your family. We're not allowed to say this, but other people are in regards to online different websites. And so we found a, a thing that I thought was kind of interesting. So the best places to raise a family in Florida. Uh, this is done by smartasset.com. And I, this is getting tossed around every blog this week for Orlando. And so I thought this was kind of interesting because number one on the list was Winter, Winter Garden. Garden. Yeah, suburbs 14 miles west of Orlando. It's really close to Disney. 28% of the population is under the age of 20, meaning there's a lot of new friends and that sort of thing for what they say. For what they say. Um, yes. So yeah, so <laughs> going to this top 10 list though, it was kind of cool to see. I mean, Winter Garden was number one, then Winning Wellington, Northport, Palm Beach, Doral. Doral. I don't want to get that one wrong again. Let me look here. Oh, did you get in trouble? Yeah. Well, last time I said Doral. it was Doral because Kristen, when you move to Florida and you hear about Cape Coral. Oh, you would say Doral. You would I say, you would okay. say Doral usually. I understand that. It sounds normal. I understand that. But, but I got absolutely roasted yeah. in the comments. People like <laughs> Good. had more people talking about it's not Doral, it's Doral. How dare you, Ken Posek? Oh my gosh. I am I call myself a Floridian. Go figure. <laughs> now. Uh, so number seven. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kick me out. Uh, number seven was St. Cloud. Cloud. I yeah, love that. St. Cloud is uh, definitely under the radar city for sure. Uh, number eight, Coral Springs, Boca, and Plantation. So how do you think this list fares? I think that you could pretty much make a list and argue really any of these locations. But they all should be on this list, and, and no matter what order it is. But I, I agree. I mean, there's so much to do and see in all of these communities. And really, we're all so close together. Like, if you are living in Winter Garden, what's going to stop you from going to the downtown Orlando events or yeah. from Mount Dora? You know, we all really kind of intertwine in all of that. So I think just Central Florida in general is really special. Yep. Um, I love Winter Garden. Yeah. I didn't, honestly, if I'm honest with you, you didn't know about didn't it. Know about it. <laughs> I've lived here my entire life. Winter Garden wasn't even on the map until like the last six, seven years. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's exploding, which is so cool. Uh, so before the show started, Jillian says, hey, can you do a video on affordable options like Polk County, Lake Alfred, Winter Haven, wow. Lakeland? Yeah. So we don't go as far as Lakeland. We eventually need to spread out that far and, and probably bring somebody on the team that covers sort of that deep Polk area. But mm. it did get me thinking because we have sold a few houses in Winter Haven over mm -hmm. the past few months. And the thing about Winter Haven, it does have a cute little downtown area um, and there's a lot of new construction. And so I was looking at like, what can your money actually buy in Winter Haven? Because there's more people asking about it. So we should talk about it. And this yeah. is what I found out. So this is wild. So these are, there were, Looking at newer construction in Winter Haven over the past 30 days, there's 50 recent sales. And I'm like, well, can you can you get a house under 300? And like, darn straight, you can. Like, this is wow. One, wow. This is so ridiculously cute. So this house was built in 2023, listed for 292. It's 1,800 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths. Wow. Um, and take a look at it. I mean, I think it's, oh, it's cute. crazy cute. Yeah. Wow. And so something like this in Winter Garden is literally five or six hundred thousand dollars. Starting. Yeah, like double the price yeah. for the same exact house. Now the proximity is a little bit farther away. And mm -hmm. so we started talking about like how far away is this actually? And so we pull up this house and from this house, and this is this time of day, which this is evening, yes. seven o'clock, going back towards Disney. Uh, it's 39 minutes up I-4. Not That's terrible. Not terrible at all. So in rush hour and a little bit busier time, you know, maybe 50 minutes. It's going to have to be. Yeah. So even if it was an hour. Uh, so for the people, this was an interesting one because last week people were asking, hey, I'm a cast member or I'm a team member at Universal. Where the heck am I ever going to be able to afford a house? Oh, that's true. And so interest rates are still high. And we'll talk about that next. But it's like. If you want to get something, I, I consider anything under 300 affordable, really maybe under 350 under affordable. 350, yeah. um, and so I think that if you look at some of these houses, like just super stinking cute. And then I was like, okay, what's the, what's the most expensive house that's sold in Mount, uh, in, sorry, Mount Dora. In Winter Haven. Uh, in Winter Haven over the past 30 days. Uh, that's newer construction. And this is the one that popped up. This house literally made me gasp when I saw we it. We both gasped. Because it's 2,500 square feet on a massive, massive Look lot. Look at the trees. This place is 
adorable. It's two bedrooms, but look what? at it. Look yeah. at that fan. It's a four. Yeah, the fireplace. It's open. Beautiful tile floors. Wow. Great view. Massive. Like, just massive, massive in terms of just all on one level. Look at that chef's kitchen. You see the gas hookup. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the two tone cabinetry. Like yes. this is gorgeous. Like this house again, Winter Garden, or even so, like we call it Winter Park, Winter or even Park. downtown. Oh, one point two. Yeah, one point two. <laughs> insane pricing. This house is six forty nine. And so for somebody that's looking for something that might be uh, on the affordable side and you're willing to drive mm -hmm. that 40 to 50 minutes to get to, say, Disney World. Now, again, you are an hour from the airport. You are an hour mm -hmm. from downtown Winter, uh, from downtown uh, Orlando. Uh, but I think for what's coming in the area, it's really hard to beat some of these pricing. That's really good pricing. That's like 2017 pricing. It, yeah, no, that's exactly it. Yeah. And Johnny, who's a, a good friend of the show, he's always checking in. appreciate him. Fellow Michigander. Uh, so it's a new food hall coming to Winter Haven. A lot of cool stuff going on there, actually. Yeah. So we are actually going to dig in more because I'm looking for value. I, I'm trying to show people where can we get something where you can get a re relatively affordable house and yeah. still live here in what I would consider Central Florida. Absolutely. No, we, we want to be able to help all types of people be yeah. able to purchase homes. And so this is really great. I love this affordability. Incredible to see. That's such a nice yeah. house. Oh, crazy, crazy, wow. crazy. Brand new for under 650. That's uh, it's ridiculous. All right. So Kristen, one of the number one things that we've been running into lately is the whole the whole uh, affordable affordability issue really caused by interest rates. Ah, oh, this conversation is it's, painful. It is wild. Painful. And so us as a team, we're constantly tracking this with our favorite lender and that sort of thing. But there's actually a guy over on uh, over on X slash Twitter that I follow. His name is Lance Lambert. He goes through, he's the data nerd for real estate, which is great. And he put out a tweet this today is like the average 30 year fixed rate fell to 7.5%. That's a half a point less. That's big. Than just like three weeks ago. And so for the average person, I mean, this one actually 30 year FHA is 6.85%. Now these aren't like crazy steals, right? But VA mortgage 30 year fixed 6.8%. And so so much more back into the level of realism oh and affordability. 8% was crazy painful. Yeah, no, it was 8% got to push people to a place where they were just like, you know what, forget this, I would rent. In fact, in many price points and many mortgage products, it was cheaper to rent yeah. than it was to buy. And so we need to be in like really the sixes to kind of make things just make sense, make sense based yeah. on where we're at. And so it was very cool to see today something's falling back into the sevens. At least we're heading the right direction. Uh, we're going to see. I don't think this is going to be a very quick retreat back to sixes and fives. No, I think we've got another year of sevens ish. Um, mm -hmm. And if it falls in quicker than that. Uh, then yay. Then yay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But, uh, you know, literally a year ago, we were at 5.99. Insane to think about how quickly things change. Right. You really can only look at what's happening in the market that moment because none of us are ever going to be able to predict the future. Yeah. So what's happening now? What can we do about it? How can we make this work for our families? And that's kind of the conversations we have with all of our clients, right? Yeah. Because interest rates do change. But what won't change is the location of that home. Exactly. Or the, the availability of that home will maybe, maybe it won't be ready for you or available at that time. So, you know, we have that conversation a lot. If you can make the monthly payment make sense at the time and then refinance, great. But anytime they're going down, we celebrate. <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So uh, Jensen, or Al Roberts says, I've been seeing some model tours online of Toll Brothers Ovation, but I can't find anything on the Jensen model. Single story front load garage. Single story front load garage. Mo is that model up yet? Uh, no, I have not mm. seen that. And so if you're looking at the retreat over at West Haven, I've got it shown up here on the model. It is a great, it's 2,100 square feet. Um, that mother-in-law suite model though, the garage apartment oh, it's so that they good. have, yeah. Ken, I almost, I was like, sign me up. You, you, you called me. You were like, <laughs> I did should I be you? buying this? Should I because buy this? <laughs> this sounds like a great deal. I could rent them both out. I love this elevation. The farmhouse elevation is just very charming. Really, really cute. Yeah. They're doing a great job over there at Ovation. That location is incredible. Hard to beat. Hard. Yeah. I'm, I'm a die hard downtown Orlando girly. Like we joke about it. You yeah. know, I, he loves winter garden. I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, Orlando's so much better. But when I was in this neighborhood, I was like, okay, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe winter garden has got me beat for a second. <laughs> this maybe. is crazy. Animal kingdoms right, right there. Right there. It's literally from, I can see it from my house. Uh, so Diana says, so crazy, another year of sevens. But uh, for those who took the advice to do the two, one buy down. Yeah. I mean, this is it, right? So mm -hmm. it's like the two, one buy down. If they took the advice last year, it would have been 5%. They bought it down to three. And then next year it would have been 
four and the next year it would have been five. And mm -hmm. then hopefully the sevens would have come down to the fives or sixes, right? So you just never know. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people if you're going to do a two one buy down, because you can still that to do that today. Like this has not gone away. It's just, it was like in vogue mm -hmm. a year ago and now it's just not talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. But the two one that buy down is essentially the sellers or the builders are putting the, the money aside to help it feel like a lower interest rate. Right. Uh, and temporarily. Then, temporarily. Yeah. So the first year it feels like two points less, the second year one point less, and then you go back to that normal payment. So you just got to be careful. Especially with new construction, because with a two one buy down, um, what you're not also taking into consideration, I think a lot of people forget this is that the taxes are going to significantly jump because they're only assessing the land when yeah. you purchase new construction. So once the home is completed and it's reassessed, then your your tax bill goes up a lot. And most lenders are pretty good at estimating, but typically I have seen they're a lot higher usually when people are expecting. And on top of that, if you've got a two one buy down now, now your payment's going up because of that mm -hmm. and the taxes. So it can be risky. So you definitely want to like protect yourself and, and look out long term and, and see what the worst case scenario is and plan for that. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So yeah, so there's a lot of people actually asking this same exact question. What's like, what's a good area for 450? Hunter's Creek, you can get something for 450. Our boy JJ, Hunter's Creek. A popka? Yeah, it's like, a popka is a great option for sure. Um, it's literally all over the board. I mean, like I actually just pulled this up while we were talking here. So from 440 to 475, there's literally, you know, Story Creek, you can get something. There's a townhome. College Park has stuff at that price. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a two bedroom, uh, two bath, thousand square foot, little 400K house on Delridge. Oh, you do? That's yeah. such, oh, I love this house. Hold on. Probably one of the best little areas that. Like the smallest little place, but like so the greatest cute. Little yeah, area. no, super updated. I mean, like new roof, new plumbing, new electrical. Del Ridge. Do you, yeah. you can also do one 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 four is the street address. Um, but I mean, just like huge backyard, really great front yard, super adorable, very charming. We staged it, of course, so people can see the space because I know that square footage can definitely be a challenge sometimes if we're looking for something a lot bigger. Yeah, but this like, one. Look how cute. This one is exactly four hundred square or four hundred thousand. It's been on the market for. Uh, just a week. Just a week. Thousand square feet, two bedrooms, two baths. In the heart of College Park. Yeah. No, this is. I mean, so... you're, you can walk to Edgewater. It's incredible. But like, look how big the lot is when you go through it. It's, it's, it's perfect. No, this is such a great little spot. It's great for like first time home buyer. Like, again, two bedrooms, two yeah, baths. Yeah. Or, you know, um, single person who is works maybe at the hospital or, or, you know, there's just so much flexibility here. I've got a bachelor who originally was living in this and then oh, now yeah. he's getting married. And so they're, you know, planning on a family and they're getting a bigger house, but this is perfect for him. He was using that second bedroom as an office yep. and the back, look at this backyard. I mean, if you can see, look in the oh. front yard, it's huge too. It's yeah. just adorable. No, it's super cute. I think that, um, Gosh, yeah, 2016, all the majors were done. The wild thing about this house, I know this this, this seller fairly well. Uh, and so looking at the neighbors, like look how huge these houses are as well. Like yes. the, the lot here is probably worth 300,000. hundred percent. Um, and so, yeah, there's plenty <laughs> of little things around the, the around yeah, Central Florida. 450 is good, yeah. 450 is a good good number. I mean, yeah. like you're not gonna get a brand new construction mansion, but mm -hmm. like you can pretty much get in. I, I was holding up here, there's places in Winter Park, there's places literally everywhere that you can get something in the 400s right now. Uh, it's just, you gotta, have have some either some vision for something that might need to be redone or if you might be willing to drive a little bit farther mm -hmm. if you want the new construction mm -hmm. with all of the amenities can you believe we bought our home for 260. no i cannot that is kind of wild we can talk about that later yeah, yeah for sure what's up mike <laughs> reese i just wanted to say hi man good to see you so good to see you man hope you're doing well i got kyle checking in and said what's up our our kansas city checking in i appreciate it very much yeah um so yeah let's keep going here we had a couple more things oh so what's going on this weekend over at disney we have the wine and dine race tomorrow is the 5k and then we've got the 10k on saturday and the half marathon on sunday are you doing all of them? I'm I'm doing the challenge. So I'm doing the 10 and the half. So Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. So I've done them before, but for those that have not raced before with Disney, talk about that experience because I think it's pretty cool. So they've gotten a lot more technically savvy over the years before. So what you have to do um, is you register online and it is kind of a nightmare to register for a run Disney race because they've become so popular. Yeah. Um, so you need to be on the lookout, you know, follow run Disney. They've got a website and Instagram. They do release the dates that they're going to be opening registration for the runs. Um, when you log on, you'll be put into a virtual queue and then you'll be able to register for the race. Um, and it's usually like six to eight months before the actual race. Yeah. So it's pretty far out. Half the time I sign up and then I'm like, 
oh shoot, I have a race this weekend. Because oh, no. I it, always it wonder. Sneaks up on you. I'm like, wait, did I register yeah. for this? <laughs> um, and so they send you, you know, your, um, online form and all of that right before and all the rules and regulations. And then in, what we used to do before is you go to the expo center over at ESPN Yep. and that's where you'll pick up your race bib. They give you shirts. Um, there's a merchandise center and you used to be able to just wait in line to go to the merchandise, but now it's a virtual queue. There's no standby. Mm. Um, and or, in order to do the virtual queue, you have to log on to the app at eight 30 in the morning on today was the day and get into the virtual queue. And then it gives you a time to come back to go get merch. Okay. And I will say we're ironing out the flaws, Disney. <laughs> so we're not quite perfect yet. How many people were there this morning when Insane you showed up? Insane amounts of people can, I mean, it's so many people do the, do the races. So many people, it's so popular. I mean, they sell out within a day, every single time at this point, there's, but, but just to pick up bibs and all that kind of stuff, like there were that many bibs, people, just that many people. And so, um, we got in line to, in the virtual queue at eight 30 and our time to go back was around 11. So we showed up and this is my only two cents about it is they are not making enough merchandise for these <laughs> runners because they were already sold out of all of the commem commemorative pins for the challenge medal, which is what I'm doing. Sure. It's figment. So he's super cute. And you want to do that. And I wanted it. And then also for the, uh, 10, K, all those medals were little uh, uh, Disney pin commemorative medals. Those were all sold out. I mean, so the merch just, I think there's some intentional qualities that Disney are doing there to kind of keep it exclusive so that the demand stays high. Yeah. But I don't appreciate it. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Uh, you're, you're not one of those that like go resell this stuff, right? No, I just it want for it for memories. myself. But I definitely, they do limit the amount of items you're allowed to purchase. Sure. But we do see these scalpers or resellers come in with entire families and each person gets the maximum amount of items. I don't know what the right way to do this is. Is, but I know what's happening now is not perfect yet. So we're on the right track, but it's really fun. It's a really fun experience. <laughs> Talk about event. community events. No, it the really run is. The Disney community, there's their family. They really are. I mean, like the people, like the Facebook groups, everybody really goes hard both before the race events like they all hang out as a community and then afterwards it's like a huge party a you get the forums, same thing facebook groups yeah. i mean slack channels there's so many groups that you can get into there's mom runners and costume creator runners and i mean there's just <laughs> there's walkers i mean there's just so many different communities for run disney i and people talk about people from all over the world ken it, i mean they're, incredible they're passionate about it like they'll so come passionate. in literally just to run and then hang out um you don't want to get caught by the balloon ladies though, right? Well, they're the nicest ladies in the world, but if you do get caught by them, you get swept and you get taken to the finish line. Mm. So, you know, it's yeah. humbling. It but... is humbling. <laughs> I would have to be, I'd have to lose a leg to get put on the bus. I would crawl across. I would be crawling <laughs> past the balloon ladies. Like my ego could never. This is right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Miami says, coffee says, hey, why doesn't, I, I can't have a coffee. I just water sign, man. It's it's late. It's late. I got to go to bed soon. Uh, we got Fallon checking in from the team. Fallon! What's up? Check it in from the watch party. Sir Piglet says, hey, question of the week. Voodoo Donuts or City Walk uh, at City Walk or Donut King? Voodoo Donuts all day because they have so many vegan Ooh. options. They have so many vegan options. Okay, well, that's, yeah, that's true. But if I, you just want like the dark, the, 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 the down, dirty no, donuts. No, we, we can fight about this till the end of time, Ken. Voodoo Donuts is where it's at. Oh, I'm going to have to <laughs> sincerely disagree and say that it's Donut King because it's just like, okay, so when I think of donuts, I think like old school, like it feels a little dirty. Am I going to get sick from this donut? But it's so good. <laughs> like, should I be eating this? Should, should I, I, I know that I shouldn't be eating this, but it's that good that I'm going to go there anyways. And so for me, it's Donut King for you. Mm -hmm. It's voodoo it's all voodoo. day. Plus all now right. they have the mobile order section. So I'm like <laughs> on my way out of the park every night. I'm like, Hmm, four or five so, donuts it is oh, <laughs> no thank you all right are you sad about hhn ending this weekend i'm sad i'm always sad i it's bittersweet i love halloween obviously for obvious reasons sure. um i really enjoy it the community aspect of it the just the fun qualities that it is halloween horror nights is such a blast we went together we as, a as a team that was so much fun and it was so much fun so i'm always sad when it's over but i like what's coming next i love the events happening at disney and and all the christmas decorations and holiday stuff coming in so it's bittersweet but it really is i did cry a little bit until like, next year at the end of Hall like halloween night i turned off my monster house and i teared oh like <laughs> well, we get we get to we get it so early that's the cool thing they start teasing stuff out in like june july and then it's like it's like a half a year event this it's, time it is it's huge isn't it it really is it's so much fun this is my favorite year so far i'll give a shout out to brandon thank you so much love the videos i appreciate you guys checking in so much I love uh, but kristen it's been fun hanging out tonight yeah absolutely listen so if they are looking to buy or sell a house 
anywhere in Central Florida, greater greater Orlando, how do they get a hold of us? They can follow us on our Instagram, our YouTube channel, Ken Pozek, call you, text me. Hey, Kristen, any of us, any of our names at posetgroup.com. That's, right. That's easy for our emails. It really is. Follow us here. Subscribe to this channel. You'll, you'll be up to date on everything that's happening in Central Florida. Um, we love you guys. We love interacting with you. This is this is what we do. We so love much it. fun. Thank you.